チキンアルミス大根ミョウチキンアルミス大根ミョウサンポノカタ teaches us how to move our feet forward, backward, standing still. Last week we did Ichimonji, tonight we're going to do Hicho. Hicho means、uh, like a bird taking off. So if you've ever seen a, like, a little bird on the ground and you go over, oh, little bird, all of a sudden it flies up and scares the heck out of you, that's the feeling we want. It's not a leap, it's, it's a rising up, like a phoenix rising. So the supporting right leg, Miggy in this case, does all the work. This supporting leg does the springing action. That's where I want you to concentrate tonight is your right leg, okay? So, this is teaching us footwork and body movement. You are not going to use these in a fight like this, but this is a classical version of an armor based technique showing us how to hold our ground and then rise up and take control. So, Migi Hicho, right Hicho, bird taking off, springing upwards. If you've ever sat in the shower and washed your feet, that's Hicho. Hopefully, you wash your feet in the shower. So, does anyone ever do this? You put your body against the wall and you grab your foot and you clean it? All Please the time. tell me I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> you should be cleaning your feet. That's Hicho. Whenever you're on one leg and you're washing your foot, this is Hicho. It's all Hicho, okay? A modern Hicho is against the wall. You just put your knee up to cover your groin and you just have your drink at the party so no one can get behind you. So, you don't sit like this at the party. You Do hicho if someone is, if you're threatening me, I want to have my groin protected here. Just put your foot up, use the wall as your ally. You can't fall, you can't trip. That's where hicho is in the 21st century, okay? So I drew a little photo, that's a little hicho guy, you can see it. The attack is close, Gyoko Ryu is quite close. I, he's going to be in kind of a hira. So he's here in Hira no Kamai. She's e n s closer, Hira's wider and a little flatter. Doesn't have to do this. I am going to be fairly close to him, and I'm just going to move in and punch him in the belly. When he sees the fist coming in, all he's going to do is go back in a right Hicho and stop. And then we'll switch. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to project my body and move. And he just gets offline. Very slight movement. And I punch low. Again. One, two. That's all you're going to do with your friend. So start with us. You're here and here up. When the punch comes in, your right foot turns, left foot perches. Toes are pointing down. Your knee goes toward the opponent to cover your groin. Left hand is here bent, right hand's a boshi sitting right on the crook like last week. So it's one, two. One, two. You can also do left. Back and forth here in Hicho. Try that with your friend. Hicho shift. Don't do it and be, and be on a straight leg. That's harder to balance, number one. Number two, the technique, you're going to come down. Remember, you're going to spring up like Mr. Norcross said. So you want to shoot and you want it to be low. You want to be low so you can go high, okay? So start 
Like a bird, a bird's not standing straight and then you're going to try to lift off. You can't. You need to be here so you can lift off. No, good. Remember, it's going to hurt. So the more we practice, the better. The surface of the ground changes the technique. You feel how squishy these tatami are. If you stand in the center, you have a better balance than if you go to the edges where it's softer. So if I put my foot here, it's squishier than if you put your foot in the center. On a hardwood floor, it's way easier to do hicho because we're sinking. Your footwear changes hicho. If you have hard shoes, wrestling shoes, you're not going to be able to do it as smoothly as if you're a barefoot or with socks because you're gripping better. The gastronemius muscles are where? Your calf muscles are these. The soleus muscle underneath it is what we're trying to build, which is the muscle between the ankle and the calf. So when I go here, I want to be able to support my entire body weight on that right leg without popping my knee out. If those muscles, if this muscle isn't built, this one here, you can pop your knee, so you have to be really careful. So it's here, and try your best to bend that knee as much as possible. This is a perch. Your left toes should be pointing toward the ground. It's not like here, hmm. your toes are straight down. I'm standing on my calf. All right. So here, remember the attitude here, flat. As he comes in, remember to get your body offline so my body blades. So if you find yourself with your chest toward the opponent, it's incorrect. As he comes in and I move and I switch, this opens up his chest. This little deflection here. This little deflection with using my leg and my arm opens him up. So if he had armor on, he's punching. He's protected here. Ribs are covered by his arm, full plate armor everywhere. But if I do this, it opens his center line up. So that's why we do that little gate on UK. Once I've cleared this here, then I can rise up and kick. So here's the part where the bird takes off. It's one, two. You notice how I'm pushing up with my right leg. That's the bird taking off. So I clear, rise up. Your leg fits perfectly with a toe stab to the suigetsu here, just under the uh, solar plexus. If I don't clear his arm, it's in the way. See it? Everything's in the way. He can block it. Look at. It. But if I, at the, if I use my, this action of the leg work. Sorry, it opens him up. Kick him in the face too. You have to be flexible. So part two. One, two, three. Just stop right there again. One, two, three. And stop. We'll finish it in a minute. Okay. Couple points. So many details. This is Gyoko Ryu in this case. The school is very close. So he's this close. It's not like Koto, we're back here. This is a close school. So if he's in, say, a Saigon or there, this is where I am. Do you remember on the board, Ichimonji was about moving back. Jumonji is about moving forward. He chose staying in place. It's teaching us how to move our body up and down. It's footwork and body positioning, the Taijutsu. If I don't move and I'm here, he will hit me right in the belly. Good. Watch how little I move. I'm just offline, just a touch. Five degrees, if that. It's not this. Because I'm so far away, he can kick, he can pull out a bazooka, he can do all kinds of stuff, different angle. Look how close we are. So when I, when I cover up in Hicho, it's right here. It's just right there. Faster. See how it... I don't hit Cole at all. I'm not blocking. 
Because I whip, it deflects naturally, but I'm not hitting him. If I hit Cole down, that's right there to hit. And if I hit him too hard to the outwatch, if I hit him too hard, this way it whips that into me. So it's not a big block, it's a monitor. Just enough to open him. Then as I kick, it's right there. The last part, once you kick, everyone do this with me. Up, step down again, put your foot back. Step in for shoot up. As you step with your right foot. One. Two, three, four. Remember we talked about it's not your arm, it's your body doing the shoot dog. That's it. It's a short cut up. There's much more we can do. And you're never gonna fight like that in a fight. The beginners have to do it slowly and monotonously so that you build a muscle strength. And eventually that all melts away. In a real modern fight, it would look nothing like that. We'll show you later what it might look like, but for now, it's very clinical, very classical, so that I can memorize the muscle movement. Okay, try it. Because if you're working with someone, or maybe and if your kick misses, that's a whole different story, right? But watch Mr. Holt. See how I gave him a little tap, but you see how his head came forward? Too bad. Now look at look what I have. There's nothing but his face, which work. But the kata is to the neck, right? The neck opens itself when you kick him in the belly. So if, if maybe you're not kicking your friends hard because you don't want to hurt them, which is great. But if you notice the, the kata is not working and you have nothing but a forehead to hit, kick them harder. Okay? Seriously, why not? Because if they're, if they're not being a good actor, give them a little bit and they'll act better. Okay? I think that's a key. The other key is if you, if you watch when I put my foot down, whoop, pow, I'm putting it down almost right on his center line because we're really close. If I put it down too far over here, I'm looking back at his head and I'm getting, I'm getting crossed up. Okay, so think about where your, where your foot placement is. I think that'll really help open up that neck area. The pressure point is called suigetsu because you kick them so hard that they look at the water and the reflection of the moon in the water. So it's like moon reflection in water. So you kick them, again, pretend there's a puddle. The moon's up there. They say, look at the moon. No, you kick them so hard that they look at the moon in the reflection. So this sweet gets it was so hard that they look straight at the ground and that's why the neck opens. So even the pressure points or the soft areas have names for a reason. Mm -hmm. This moon water, I hit so hard that he's looking at the moon reflect. What a beautiful moon as he's vomiting in the puddle. <laughs> so think of that, it'll help you with the kick. He chose a concept, he chose a concept. So I can be here and he punches and I go to the outside. It works the same. He hit high on that. Does it matter if they hit high or low? No, I can do the same thing whether it's high or low. So we're not going to expect a gut punch. It could be a face or the middle. Tenji nor chi, it doesn't matter. He might hit high and I, I decide to go out here. Instead of this, you just push him with your arm. Again, I want to. I want to open up his liver. So here, you see the hecho in this direction. Again, no moron is going to stand like that to start the fight. It's a principle. So this is hecho. Just your foot lining up is hecho as well. That's hecho. And you do not have to put your foot on your calf. You can leave it on the ground. You're wearing heavy boots. Here. You kick the back, he's going to go down, kick him the back of the thigh. See it? Folds right in. Bang! To the back of the head, whatever you need to do. Sorry, <laughs> So a modern version, groin. Understand? Keep monitoring and hit the kidney. There's a thousand things you can do.
just moving into position, taking him down. Again, if I have a weapon. If he has a sword out, this comes from attacking the leg, Ashi, so he attacks the Ashi, you know, he cuts my leg off. Boop. That's where this comes from, everything's battlefield. So if I move, I'm clearing the danger. Clearing the danger. It's all. He sees a big target. Look at that thing. Go for it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> he has a Naginata. You can keep your sword in. He cuts. Naginata's made for this. I'm dead. Go ahead. Leg is dead. Oh. Move out of the way and then clear the distance. See it? Heavy weapon, right? Heavy weapon does what? It guarantees an overextension. It guarantees an overextension. <laughs> you can move forward with Hicho too, you okay? Try it out with a weapon. So again, a modern Hicho is, leg is resting, weights on that soleus muscle here. Just relaxing against the bar, having a coffee, a cocktail, whatever it is. If you feel you're in danger, this covers the groin and aligns your body to shield yourself. Ribs are covered, hands are up. Modern version. It doesn't look too weird either. I've seen people do this, playing billiards or something. And if you have a pool stick or something, you just hang with your pool cue and wait for the turn. It's good practice. And then if you really want to practice, don't lean on the wall and work on that muscle so that you can eventually really dig deep there. Hicho, that, that bird taking off is a concept. It's not something you're going to do exactly like that. It's an armor-based classical technique. Does it work in the 21st century? Yes, but you have to modify everything about it. But the principle of covering the groin and your, all your openings is a good one. And the idea of this surprise kick that comes out of nowhere from the bottom up is fantastic for self-defense. Because no, everyone fights up here. They don't expect you to kick them in the teeth from underneath, and that's where this comes from. So, migi hicho, right hicho, that's for this week. Let's bow. Thank you, friends. Put the weapons yeah. away.